Hosea. Chapter 4. I want to welcome everyone here today. We're still alive to do the will. Amen? We're still alive to do the will. <laughs> Not our will, right? Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. Let's speak it together, please. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed. God's people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Lack of godly knowledge, not just lack of knowledge. You can go to school and learn all kinds of stuff. It ain't going to do you no good. It's okay for the realm, this realm, but it's not going to get you in heaven. Amen? I know a lot of professional students that are going to hell. Because they don't know Jesus, and they're not doing his will. Remember, the knowledge of the world puffs you up. It promotes pride. It brings intellect. The Lord says, my people are destroyed for lack of godly knowledge, and because you keep rejecting my knowledge, my word, I will reject you for being a priest for me. That means somebody close. Because your first office to fulfill is priesthood. And because you've forgotten the word of God or the laws of God, I will forget your children. So we see that as a curse that goes down the family line. My people are destroyed for lack of godly knowledge, the word of God. When individuals reject godly knowledge, or which, we, which brings counsel, correction, and direction, and protection. I'm going to say that again. The word of God brings counsel, correction, direction, and protection. But many individuals replace it with intellectual understanding. And when you replace it with intellectual understanding, because what happens is the word of God can only be interpreted by the Holy Spirit. Your carnal mind cannot interpret what God is trying to say. Only the Holy Spirit can interpret the Word of God. That's why we have all kinds of denominations and stuff. Is everybody okay? And only the Holy Spirit can interpret the words of God and the Word of God. The intellectual, the intellect of individuals promotes reason. Everyone say reason. And reason is the guillotine of faith. It cuts faith. One of the things the Holy Spirit's trying to bring me and you into is what we call perfect harmony. Everyone say perfect harmony. You know, when things are in perfect harmony, they go smooth. Even when you hit a bump in the road, it's still going smooth, isn't it? It's like a car that's out of tune. It needs a tune-up. When, when it's not in tune, it's not in harmony. And it runs rough. There are a lot of rough individuals. And the reason for it is because they're not in harmony. Harmony with who? The Holy Spirit. Perfect harmony. Turn to Romans 12, please. They're not in perfect harmony. And that's why fatal decisions are made because of lack of perfect harmony. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, would you speak it with me? Do not be what? Conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed by the renewing of your thoughts. That you may what? Prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We are not to be conformed to the world, but transformed because the mind 
will, emotions, imaginations, and desires are part of the soul. And in the soul, he's saying something very important. He's saying, look it, I do not want you to be associated with the soulish aspects of worldly logic. Has everybody got it? Worldly intellect. I don't want you to be associated with worldly intents, attitudes, purposes, reasoning, and even senses of humanity. Even desires of intellectual knowledge. See, one of the things that we've got to come to an understanding is that reasoning is associated with intellect. And it will prevent me and you from perfect harmony with the spirit of the living God. He's saying, I don't want your soul to be associated with this. Your thoughts, your desires, your imaginations, your motives, your intents. That's why the word says something powerful. It says, come out from among them and be separate. Why? So you don't end up dead and in hell. We have been born again, called out of darkness into the light to fulfill his mission. His will, not ours. You and I were bought with a price, and we cannot forget this. So when we begin to go over the boundaries, remember, in God's presence, there is a refresh and a reset. Amen? And in that reset, he resets boundaries. And we've talked about this all, multiple times. And the lack of God's presence will promote your own presence. So we need to get rid of our presence and, and exchange it for his presence. And 2 Corinthians 3. Or else there can't be perfect harmony. And when there's not perfect harmony, you will miss multiple opportunities of not only rescue, but opportunities of God. 2 Corinthians 3. You know, think about how many opportunities we've missed already. Some of those opportunities, we thought they were going to be good opportunities, would end up disastrous anyways. <laughs> but without perfect harmony with the Holy Spirit, we will miss opportunities, we will be misled, and we'll be led how we feel and things around us. One of the things we do not want to live is out of the soul, we want to live out of the spirit. We do not want to live out of the flesh, we want to live out of the spirit. And 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Is everybody there? I mean, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12. I'm sorry. Let's speak it. Therefore, since we have such what? Hope, we use great boldness of speech, unlike Moses who put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of what was passing away. But their minds, their thoughts were blinded. For until this day, the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away in Christ. Again, I want to share with you Christ. In Christ means the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. And it's carried in the Holy Spirit. So what he's saying is, if you're not in perfect harmony with the Holy Spirit, it's easy to be weighed the veils are going to come back on and you're going to become blinded again. Verse 15. But even to this day when Moses has read, a veil lies on their heart. In other words, a veil or a, a blinder. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is what? Taken away. In other words, when one starts in fellowship, in perfect harmony with the Holy Spirit, People are able to, be able to see, they're able to hear. They stop reacting and start responding. Verse four, 17. Now the Lord is the what? Spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord, there is liberty or freedom. Freedom. But we all with unveiled face, behold, as in the mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit 
of the Lord. Again, your minds, your thoughts, your hearts are blinded or they are blocked out from the Holy Spirit, allowing him to access our thoughts and purposes, our desires and will of individuals because the soulish worldly associations that promote self, that promote self, and intellectual pride, they, they influence what we call reasoning. Reasoning. And the reasoning process of evil is to cause us to sway the wrong way and make wrong decisions or miss opportunities. Reasoning, again, is the guillotine of faith. Reasoning. In Christ's presence, which is in Christ, there is his presence, his power, and his truth. And again, they are carried by the Holy Spirit. Reason, reason is the blocker of perfect harmony. Reasoning is the blocker of perfect harmony. One of the things, that's how the enemy, that's how the serpent deceived Eve. He got her the first reason. It brought a justification. It brought a compromise. He got her to reason. Again, reasoning is the blocker of perfect harmony with the Holy Spirit. Now, the tree of life was a source in the garden, wasn't it? Amen? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil was a source of death, but the tree of life was a source of life. So one of the things the enemy wants us to do is begin to change our source so that he becomes the source and we begin to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil instead of the tree of life. And he does that by reasoning. Oh, hallelujah. The tree, and if you think about it, it says the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil compared to the tree of life. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil compared to the tree of life. Why? Because the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, its source is death, and its weapon is reasoning, and it's backed by deception. It's backed by what? Deception. And it is empowered by fear. I want to say this again because this is vital because there's a lot of times people are falling into reasoning. Reasoning with things. Again, it's associated with like compromise. If we fall into the area of reasoning, you cannot reason God's word. It is what it is. You can't reason his voice. It is what it is. What he says is law. That's that. You can't. I've heard people pray, tell me they're going to pray about the word of God. What are you going to pray about? You either accept it or you don't. There isn't anything to pray about. You know how many believers do not read the word of God? So they fall into intellectual reasoning all the time. And the word of God can never be manifested in their life. It just can't. Why? Because it's actually unbelief. Oh, hallelujah. James chapter 3. Perfect harmony is staying in tune with the Spirit. Perfect harmony. Is everybody there? 313, is everybody okay? Let's speak it. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and, everything, and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. 
who make peace. The worldly way of intellectual wisdom is argumentative. I'm going to say it's argumentative. Why? Because it's influenced by reasoning. Reasoning is always going to cause an argument. Why? So individuals rationalize the true word of God. They rationalize it. Or they rationalize the ways of God. And, and, uh, on the basis of their knowledge of past experiences, wrong teachings, religious beliefs, views, and opinions. I'll say it again. That formulate a, a belief system that is consistent or inconsistent, I'm sorry, that is inconsistent with sacred, sacred scripture. I'm going to say this again. So what happens is individuals rationalize the true word of God or the ways of God on the basis of their knowledge of the past experiences. Past experiences. Wrong teachings. Religious beliefs. Views. Opinions. And these opinions that formulate a belief system that is inconsistent with the scriptures. See, they speak what they believe. And they're rejecting perfect harmony with the Holy Spirit. Because they're very opinionated. Individuals that are very opinionated are always associated by reasoning. Is everybody okay? Titus chapter 3. They're very argumentative. Oh, glory. Titus 3, verse 4. <clears throat> Is everybody there? Amen. Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? Amen. Let me tell you, the enemy is trying to trap us with reasoning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, let's read this together. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Spirit, Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Christ Jesus our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Wow. This is a faithful saying, and these things I want you to affirm constantly. That those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men, but avoid what? Foolish disputes, genealogies, contentions, and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and useless. And they are what? Useless. Okay. In the process of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, Intellectual reasoning must be taken captive. Or the veil will return or be restored. And that will bring doubt. It will bring blindness. It will bring torment. It will be mistrust. And one of the things it does is begin to establish strongholds. It begins to establish strongholds. This is where a person falls into an area of always blaming, criticizing, murmur, and fabrication of their own opinions all the time that are actually destructive to the will of God. 
I'll say this again. In the process of regeneration, renewing of the Holy Spirit, intellectual reasoning must be taken captive or the veil will remain or be returned or restored. And it will bring doubt and blindness and torment and mistrust. It will establish strongholds and you begin to blame, criticize, and murmur. And there will be fabrications of opinions that are destructive to the will of God. You'll do a lot of button. But, 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 but. Behind every reason, there's a but. It needs to get kicked out. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Second Corinthians chapter 10. Man, you're all quiet this morning. You all okay? Hallelujah. <laughs> In verse 3, Second Corinthians 10, 3, For though we walk in the natural realm, we do not walk according to the natural realm or physical realm called the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not natural or physical or carnal, but they are what? Mighty in God for pulling down what? Strongholds. Hmm. Pulling down strongholds, which are memory lies. They are memory lies of reason. And they create arguments. Casting down what? Arguments. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Wow. So strongholds, again, are memory lies of reason that create arguments against the knowledge of God. The battle between the intellectual and true knowledge of, is constant. It's constant. Again, the knowledge of the world will promote pride. The knowledge of God will promote humility. The true interpretation, again, can only come by the presence of God and the Holy Spirit. That's why he requires perfect harmony. We should strive for perfect harmony with the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 4. Oh, hallelujah. Again, we discussed that Christ, the word, when we see Christ, it's talking about the presence and power and truth of God Almighty carried in the Holy Spirit, in Christ. Jesus was a perfect example of perfect harmony. He says here, look at this, in verse 20, but you have not so learned Christ or the anointing. If indeed you had heard him or have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus or the Christ that was in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, but be what? Renewed in the spirit of your thoughts. Be refreshed, be renewed, bring to remembrance the things of God, the word of God, and that you put on the what? The new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, putting away lying, let each of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another's. Be angry and don't sin. Do not let the sun go down in your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give to him who is in need. And let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearer, hearers. And here it is. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed. For the day of redemption, let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. 
renewing in the spirit of your thoughts. It is a new way of thinking. It is not a religious way of thinking. It is not a denominational way of thinking. It is not an opinional way of thinking. But the way the word thinks is the way God speaks. Has everybody got it? Producing surrender, submission, humility, humbleness, righteousness, and holiness. Again, without renewing or refreshing, which brings reset of boundaries, the mind, grab hold of this, please. The mind will begin to do something. It will begin to drift and look for something else to refresh, and it'll be the wrong thing. See, if you're not refreshing it with the word, it desires to be refreshed with something else. That's why people backslide. That's why people make wrong decisions. The mind will begin to drift because of the attitude. Let me share this with you. Of boredom. The mind will begin to drift because of the attitude of boredom. Anybody ever tell you they're bored? They're dangerous. Because of the attitude of boredom. Again, they will look elsewhere for refresh in the wrong places. Oh, hallelujah. Do I need to say this again? Everybody got this? Hebrews 4. Hebrews chapter 4. Verse 12. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. Perfect harmony. For the word of God is what? It's living. It's what? Living. Whoa. That's what holds everything together. The word of God is living. It's not dead. It's not just letters. The word of God is living. Although people only look at it as letters. When you begin to look at the word of God as a person, it's different. The word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the division of soul. Soul. It's piercing the division of your soul. What do you mean? Your mind, your will, your emotions, your imaginations, and your desires. It's piercing it. It's exposing it. And spirit. And the joints and marrows, your flesh, your body. And as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the hearts. Wow. In other words, there's a place where you and I, if we're allowing the word of God to get into us, we're allowing it to separate your spirit, soul, and body. And you'll know the difference. You'll know the difference between things that are of the spirit, of the soulish, and of the flesh. But without the word of God, you can't. And it will always bring separation with you and the Holy Spirit. There will not be perfect harmony. Is everybody okay? Oh, allowing the word of God to separate our spirit, soul, and flesh from the old man, <laughs> from the old, from the new, so it can expose influence of intellectual reasoning because it is the discerner of the thoughts. Remember, the word of God is living. It's living. So when you speak the word of God, what you speak is what you eat. It's coming back. You're eating it. So what's happening, the influence of intellectual reasoning that prevents perfect harmony is always there ready by the powers of darkness. And especially in these days of evil. Man, we don't need any more bondage. 
What it does is bring bondage. It brings a person back into captivity. It brings a person back into blindness. Reasoning is a killer. And people don't realize it and they play with it. It will try to convince you, bring doubt and unbelief. It will try to cause you to sway. It tries to tell you that you're bored. Why? So you look somewhere else for refreshing. And the devil brings a false refreshing. But the end result is destructive. In Matthew 16... Perfect harmony. Did you ever catch yourself in compromising something? You know what? Well, when you catch yourself in compromising, well, you know what? I'm, it's not that you've compromised, but there's a consideration of it. That consideration is called reasoning. Has everybody got it? The consideration, the compromise is reasoning. What the enemy wants to do is get you to reason because behind every reason is deception. Matthew 16, 24. People wonder why they do the same thing over and over and over. It's because they're not allowing the refresh to come from the word of God. They're allowing the refresh to come from the world. Matthew 16, 24. Is everybody there? Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to what? Come after me, let him deny himself, pick up the sword, the... the cross and fight and follow me for whoever desires to save his life will lose it but whoever loses his life for my sake will what will find it this is the formula for perfect harmony it always goes back to this what do you have to do you have to deny yourself you have to pick up the sword and fight which is the word of god then you can follow because without that you can't listen the word says that God rejects the proud but gives grace to the humble. Amen? Grace is God's plan. So you want more of his plan for you. Amen? You want also God's favor, but your er, favor is earned. Trust is, trust is earned, right? So is favor. God isn't, you're not going to get God's favor if you're not doing the things that are right. So you're not going to, you know, and favor is approval. So when you ask for something, God doesn't favor anyone. He gives approval. Does everybody get it? Although we like to say God favors me, you know. He, he, he gives approval of something. Why? He gives approval because you've earned it. You've earned his trust in something, so he approves it. Grace is not God's unmerited favor. It's unmerited love. You earn God's trust. Amen? So, again, in this formula, so God rejects the proud but gives grace more plan, more things of his, himself. He expresses more of himself to you. He, he gives you more things to expand in this kingdom. But with that, more grace takes more death. More life takes more submission. More revelations take more humility. You know, in the book of Amos, there's some, uh, a scripture that's so powerful. It says, can two walk together unless they agree? It's called perfect harmony. In other words, how, if you don't agree with what God says, then how can you walk with him? 
So when I hear people tell me, oh, I don't read the word of God, I just, no way, it's impossible. You can't walk with him because you don't know what pleases him. It's impossible. So you got to stay filled with the spirit. Amen? Listen, perfect harmony takes something very important, perfect consistency. Because if you're not consistent in refreshing, you're going to get refreshed somewhere else. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can two walk together unless they agree, not reason? Reasoning will never cause agreement. It'll always cause argument. Amen? And it's always that battle, it's the battle that you and I deal with all the time. It's the butt syndrome and the what if. Ephesians 4. <laughs> perfect consistency will bring perfect harmony. Ephesians 4, please. In verse 1. Let's speak it. I, there, a prisoner of the Lord. How many of y'all want to be a prisoner of the Lord? Man, you can't be a better prisoner than a prisoner of the Lord. I'd rather be in prison with the Lord than in prison. Well, even if you're in prison, you can be in prison with the Lord. You can be more free or in prison than out. <laughs> I, therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy, walk worthy, walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness, gentleness, with loving, long-suffering, bearing with one another in love, Endeavoring to keep the unity or the harmony of the spirit in the bond of peace. There's one body, one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Unity is harmony. And I want to close in Ephesians 5. Perfect harmony. I think you have something to chew on today. It needs to be digested. <laughs> oh, glory. Bring a self-examination. Ephesians 5 and verse 1. Therefore be what? Imitators of God as dear children. And walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us. An offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness or foolish talking nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, or covetous man who is an idolater has any entrance or inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words of reasoning. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be what? Do not be partakers with him. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the spirit, for the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. 
and they have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but what? Expose them. Expose it. Rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep. Arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. The days are what? Evil. So you and I are to be imitators of God by what? Perfect harmony. And do not let reasoning disqualify you or disconnect you or cause you to drift in any way whatsoever. You stand firm on the word of God. No matter what's going on, you stand firm. You eat of it as food. It is your food. Man cannot live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, or you'll be easily deceived with reasoning. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let the seed and revelation that's been imparted in us today be protected by the blood of Christ, and let it grow in every part of our being, overtaking us and possessing us, knowing that your word is alive. It's living, dwelling in us, for you are the word who became flesh and dwelt among us. And now we are the flesh that's becoming word. So, Father, bring revelation to each and every one in the importance of exposing all reasoning and compromising in our life. In Jesus.